a Lewis dot structure is a notation that we use that shows bonds between atoms and lone electron pairs in the valence shell of each atom. The way that we do this is we write the element symbol, so here we have lithium, and then we indicate the number of electrons that is in the valence shell. The reason why we only focus on the valence shell is because that is the shell that would play a role in whether or not an element bonds. So the valence shell electrons are the only ones that take part in bonding and therefore the only ones that are important to consider. So lithium being in group one only has one valence electron. We can either indicate that with a dot or with a cross. Beryllium has two valence electrons because it is in group two and we always place the electrons in separate orbitals first because these electrons are negatively charged and therefore repel each other. Boron being in group 13 or major group 3 would therefore has, have three valence electrons, again all three in separate orbitals. Carbon being in group 14 or group 4 has four valence electrons, each one in its own orbital. Nitrogen being in group 15 has five valence electrons and here we see that we first fill each orbital and then we place a second electron in one of the orbitals, so nitrogen, as we can see, has five valence electrons. We complete this process where we see that oxygen, being in group 16, has six valence electrons, and we can see it would be indicated like that. Fluorine, being in group 17, has seven valence electrons, and we show that by filling each orbital with a single electron before placing two electrons in any orbital and neon, along with all of the noble gases, or group 18 elements, has eight valence electrons, or we would just say a full valence shell, which is why none of our noble gases take part in bonding. Important to note here that these are all referred to as the valence electrons, but what we can see here is that when we have two orbitals, excuse me, two electrons in one orbital, we would call that a lone pair. We know that an orbital can only hold two electrons, and so when an orbital is full, we say that that is a lone pair. So here we can see that there are no lone pairs in lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon. There's one in nitrogen, two in oxygen, three in fluorine, and four lone pairs in neon. The reason why this is important, that we can draw a Lewis structure, is because now we can see why a bond would form or where bonds would possibly form because we know that all bonds form because an atom wants to achieve greater stability and it does that by following something called the octet rule. The octet rule tells us that the goal for each of these atoms is to obtain eight valence electrons. It can either do that by sharing electrons with neighboring atoms or it can do that by transferring, either gaining or losing electrons. And so what we find is there are, from this there are two types of bonds that can form. The first is a bond that forms when electrons are shared, when the orbitals of those two atoms overlap, and that is called a covalent bond. A simple example of a covalent bond is as we can see here, we have a fluorine atom that has seven valence electrons. If that fluorine atom overlaps its orbital with a nearby fluorine atom, what we find here is that those two fluorine atoms are then sharing an electron pair and each fluorine atom can then say it has a full valence shell because there are eight electrons surrounding that atom and eight electrons surrounding that atom and so we have formed a covalent bond here through orbital overlap which shares electrons. The converse of this is the bond that would form between something like lithium, which as we can see has only one valence electron, and fluorine, which as we can see has seven valence electrons. And because fluorine has such a high electronegativity or has a far greater electronegativity than lithium, that electron would be taken from lithium towards fluorine. And so what we can form here is lithium that has now lost an electron and is therefore positively charged. That is then going to be attached to fluorine that has now gained an electron. 
and is therefore negatively charged, and that electrostatic force of attraction is what holds them together. What we can now look at here is we can see that this fluorine atom has a number of lone pairs and a number of shared electron pairs. Over here we can see that this fluorine atom has three lone pairs of electron and one shared electron pair, an electron pair that is shared between the two of them. The reason why Lewis dot structure is important is because it allows us to look at not only the shared electrons, but the lone electron pairs, because all electrons that surround the atom are important in playing a role in the shape that that atom or molecule takes. So we use Lewis structure to show lone pairs and shared electron pairs because both of those pairs of electrons play a role in determining the shape of a molecule.